friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our CD software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamental concepts of software testing. We are in chapter four talking about the test design techniques and continuing ahead with the same segment 4.1 where writing test cases were discussed in our previous tutorial. But today we'll be introducing you to the various categorizations and test techniques overall that what exactly they are and how they can be best utilized. In order to get started, the number one thing here we are talking about is what exactly test design techniques are. If you remember, we had a principle of testing in our chapter one where we spoke about exhaustive testing is impossible and which clearly stated that you cannot try with all possible test cases which you can think of to be executed for an application because there is no end to it. You can come up with any number of test cases. Sometimes it could be defined as infinite as well, which means that there is no end to perception. There is no end to the way a user or tester can think about different applications. Or even if we talk about the test data, there can be various permutation and combination when it comes to uh, coming up with all combination of data and testing the scenario. So when we say that, is there a possibility of coming up with that definite number of test cases, uh, exhaustive testing is not su suggested. Rather, we have the test design technique which helps you to create your minimum number of test cases at any point of time, but at the same time, not compromising on the overall coverage, what you want to achieve. So the test design techniques is, an, is a way by which you can apply these techniques on given scenarios or a particular set of requirement, particular code, or even a particular a module which you're trying to test and this technique will help you to reduce your test cases and give you the maximum coverage at any point of time. That means you don't have to worry about that num that question that how many test cases would be enough? Do you think 100 test cases would do the job or would you think 20 will still be enough? So the test technique will answer all that question that how can you reduce your number of test cases and at the same time what is the different number of test cases which are required to test a particular requirement. Now, there are multiple categories where your techniques can be categorized. And there are three major categories called as black box test techniques, white box test techniques, and experience based text techniques. Now, just on a very nutshell or very high level thing, when you talk about the black box techniques, uh, number one thing is these techniques are applied when you have requirements formally documented, which pretty much means that you do have the set of requirements written in a way by which you can find all the information about the requirement. And when we say formal requirement, it means it is very detailed and has everything in the documentation. You don't have to rely on any other person to know about the requirement. Okay, in order to apply the black box test techniques, all you need is the set of rules, a set of specifications, requirements, formally documented. Otherwise, you cannot apply this technique. Now, the techniques included under this category include equivalence partition, boundary value analysis, decision table testing, straight transition testing, pairwise testing. Uh, we do have domain analysis, cause effect graph, and there are a number of things which you can put them under the specification and they all are completely related to requirements. If in case requirements are missing, then these category is not at all applicable. Whereas the other category is white box test technique, which certainly talks about the techniques which are applied at the white box approach. Now, just go back to your previous learnings and we covered that white box testing approach is an approach where the testing is done at the coding level at the programming level and any any individual who has the understanding of coding can certainly go back at the back end and run the programs and get the desired output. Generally, we use this approach for unit testing because here we can talk about small programs to be executed independently. Now, the techniques included here are statement testing, decision testing, modified condition testing, multiple condition decision testing, or even if you take you know, other examples like path coverage, cyclomatic complexity, all these are white box testing techniques. But for this, the basis include that you should have access to the code and you should understand what is coding. The third category is for any scenario where these two categories are not applicable. 
That means you don't have a code access and you don't have the requirements given to you in a very formal way. In that context, we make use of experience-based test techniques. There could be scenarios where we don't have the formal requirements documented and we do not have knowledge of programming given that you are a tester, right? In that context, experience-based testing plays a vital role. And here, you still have a basis, but the basis is that you should have knowledge of testing such products in past, and you should have the knowledge of the domain which the product belongs to. And following that, you can also have some good knowledge of typical defects, what you get as a part of that product testing. Now, these things put together will give you all that what you need to test such products without any specific formal technique. Just for your kind information, the black box testing techniques and the white box testing techniques are also called as formal techniques, whereas, whereas experience-based techniques are called as informal techniques because here you don't write test cases. On top of it, if it is not at all necessary that any, any particular technique can be just blindly applied in any particular scenario, right? Because each technique comes with its own characteristics or own set of uh, you know, applicability. You just can't say that equivalence partition can be applied in a scenario where you have decisions made because you have a decision table technique for that. EP is not at all applicable in that, that context. If you're talking about unit testing and you're talking about applying that at the code level in the program, doing unit testing, I don't have to apply pairwise testing there. I don't have to really worry about experience-based testing given that I have the knowledge of code and I can run it directly there. So the point is, every single technique has its own applicability and has its own set of characteristics which are accordingly applied in a given scenario. So given that you will have some requirements to be tested, you need to analyze your requirement, analyze the scenario, analyze the conditions, what you have with you, and based on that, pick up the appropriate technique which best applies in that particular scenario, right? And at any point, if you think that there is a possibility that you can combine multiple techniques to get the best outputs, we don't stop you there, right? You can always go through uh, looking forward to combine multiple techniques to come up with more effective number of test cases rather than always just trying to reduce. You know, when you try to reduce the test cases, you are actually coming with very minimal number of test cases which needs to be tested. Sometime it would be possible that you have so less number of test cases that you yourself don't feel confident. In that context, you go ahead and combine few techniques together to have a sufficient handful set of test cases which gives you a better confidence and better coverage too at the same time. So being a tester, it's your call, or being a test manager, they will suggest to you that what kind of techniques for a given scenario can be combined and have the best output there by applying them together, right? So we'll be getting into each one of them one after the other and telling you how these app techniques are actually going to work in reality and how do you apply them. And at the same time, we'll also be giving you the understanding of how these fit into a particular set of requirement, how to make a decision that which technique will be best applicable for a given set of requirement, right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.